this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to take our um, very minimal SDL application here and we're going to set it up so that it produces a window, um, just a blank empty window on the screen, which you can close by clicking the cross in the corner. So the way I, the way I put this together originally was by searching for sample code on Google. I searched for stuff like SDL tutorial. And I found a tutorial that did the beginnings of what I want. I found several tutorials actually, which was to create an SDL program that runs in a window and does uh, pixel acts, um, actually accesses the pixels, does pixel manipulation, pixel access. And uh, then I, I took out the, the basic bits of that tutorial bit by bit. So first I worked on getting a window on the screen and then I worked on um, setting pixels on that window and so on and I proceeded from there. So uh, that's the strategy I'd recommend to you and especially uh, if you've got, if you've got, if you want to create a program that does something that you're not sure if you're going to be able to do like create a sound for example then it's, it's really good to look at some tutorials and first put together a really minimal tutorial that makes a sound. So let's, let's get started with this. The first thing I need to do here, once I've initialized my program correctly, is um, use a, f a function called SDL create window to create a window. Let's get rid of this init succeeded thing. So um, I'm going to type here, uh, we need a, an object of type SDL window pointer, which I'll call window. And we're going to create that by using a function called SDL underscore create window paying careful attention to the capitalization there. Now the first argument to this, and by the way, if you're using a newer version of uh, STL, this could have changed, but you can easily look up information about these functions or for that matter, look for more recent tutorials. For example, uh, if I hover over this, uh, we actually get some documentation, at least in this version of Eclipse, about the function. Uh, we, get, we get more if we actually don't have a syntax error there. Um, and you can also just paste it into Google and you'll find the official SDL documentation plus a load of tutorials as well. So um, it's, it's really handy to do that. So the first, the first argument here is um, it's a string, it's just the title of the window. So let's call this particle fire explosion. Second argument, um, if I remember rightly, the second and third arguments enable you to position the window and I'm going to use a special constant from stl.h called stl window pause undefined. So hopefully I've remembered that correctly and if not I'm going to have to check when we fail to compile this. Let's see if I can format that. Now the next arguments are the screen width and the screen height. And I'm going to have to refer, refer to those again later in my program. So I'm going to create constants with those values. Let's put these at the top of main. Variables you try to declare as close as possible to where you need them, but often with constants, um, you'll put them uh, somewhere near the top of a function, or, or perhaps more often, you'll make them um, static public members of a class because you need to use them in multiple places. Uh, so let's let's say here um, const int screen width. I'll set that equal to 600. This is actually going to be the size of the window. Actually, let's make it 800. Um, but I'm calling it screen width and screen height, just because um, I may well change this at some point in the future to run full screen. Uh, but it will in this program actually be the the window size. So I'm going to paste that in here. Uh, I've chosen 800 and, and 600 uh, because, well, it probably doesn't matter what size we create the window, but um, there are certain standard screen resolutions that computers used to use historically and that modern computers are usually capable of switching into. If you do decide to create a full screen program, you've actually got to get your computer to switch its graphics mode and it, there's only certain modes that it can switch into. And those are um, things like 800 by 600, which is a standard sort of mode. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just pick that, just 
just because it's kind of traditional and because if we made this run full screen, it's likely that our computer could support this particular resolution. And the final, uh, the final um, argument that we have to supply here to SDL, SDL create window is going to be SDL underscore window shown. And this is, um, at this point in the create window, if we hover over it here, we can see that we can supply various flags for the last item that, um, that alter the window in various ways. And although it doesn't seem to say here, as far as I can see, if you look at the, oh, it does actually, yeah, no, it doesn't. If you look at the um, API document, which I just searched for, uh, you can actually find that STL window shown basically means don't alter the window, just create a normal sort of window. So that's, that's what I want here. So I didn't put this together. I didn't figure this out by looking at the API document. I, I figured it out by looking at tutorials, but the API document will often help you. It'll help you to understand what you're typing. And it's really, really useful when you do this. Um, if you look at tutorials to type line, lines out by yourself, because even if you don't completely understand what you're typing, it really helps hugely to, um, to get it into your mind. And it's, it's kind of a way of um, pushing yourself to gradually understand the code if you actually type it out yourself. So that's why I always type stuff out myself rather than just copy and paste it wholesale from tutorials, especially like the second or third time I do it. First time I may be tempted to copy and paste, but typing out is really good. So now um, we need to check to see if that window is null or not, because if SDL window can't create a window for some reason, it will return null. So I'm going to say, if window is equal to null. Null is a constant which is often used in C++. It's defined in st uh, standard lib.h, std lib.h, which sdl.h probably includes, or else, if not, um, then uh, it probably defines it um, itself, but it's common to use this um, with a lot of different APIs. So let's say if the window is null, we're going to call SDL quit and we're going to return let's say 2. So usually if your program runs okay you return 0 and otherwise you usually return an, like a positive integer to indicate sort of what's happened and you, you will only see this return code if you if you run your program in some fancy way in your operating system that enables you to get the return code from the program so it's not really that useful but um, the main thing is just um, it's just kind of traditional to return a non-zero integer if your program fails but it would still work if you just did return naught and we're probably never gonna you're probably never gonna actually examine that error code but you could um, now if you look at the API document you find that you can get more information about what went wrong if SDL doesn't initialize properly using SDL get error so we could output that using C out. This, I presume, returns a string. Here it's being output using printf. Printf is a, stands for print format, and that's actually an old C function. But um, old habits die hard, and C++ programmers often use printf when they probably should be using C out. In some ways, printf is nicer than C out, I have to say. Um, C out can sometimes be a little bit cumbersome. So um, this is actually worth learning about, but you can just copy this line and paste it in to your program um, if you want to, and you have to include uh, std, stdio.h standard input output.h as well, if you want to use printf, or you could just use c out with sdl get error. But if your program isn't created, that will enable you to get more information about what, in, what went wrong and potentially you can type that information into Google and try to find other people who've got that same problem. So if we initialize the window correctly, before we quit the program, we have to call SDL underscore destroy window, um, paying close attention as always to capitalization because C++ is case sensitive and we supply it with the pointer to the window object. And we should call that as well Actually, yeah, if, if we, I was going to say we should call it here, but that's wrong. If we can't create the window, 
course we don't need to destroy it so that would be um, a very bad idea probably um, it may even crash if you try to if you pass a null pointer to this function I don't know but if the window is created successfully and we don't return here we want to destroy it which I guess closes it and cleans up maybe cleans up some resources and call STL quit which again will clean up any resources that um, that STL is using now uh, this isn't quite enough to put a window on our screen uh, because at the moment um, we just we will just be creating a window and immediately destroying it immediately going on to end the program so I doubt that we'd see a window if we ran this what we need next is we need our game loop um, so in games and you have a, a similar concept in graphical user interface GUI programs as well in games you have a thing called a game loop uh, which will be a, a loop that will run for as long as the, the game is running and it, it will do stuff like um, well in, in the case of this program where we're going to deal with a load of particles we're going to update the positions or state of particles the color or whatever we're going to draw our particles and we're going to check for um, messages or events you could say what messages and events are are um, if the user clicks a window or presses a button when a window program is active or does anything involving the window clicks a button on the window or something we say that raises an event and uh, some sort of data structure will be filled in with information about what's happened and we need to call some sort of function that checks if any events are waiting to be processed and we can then examine those events and see what they are so an event is something that we say is raised by the user doing something uh, most of the time or by something happening involving a window we'll see how that works in a minute in um, GUI programs uh, you have a similar idea called the event loop which again has to it has to run a loop which processes your events things that are happening in the window as well as give the the kind of subsystem a chance to update the window if it's like hidden by another window or something it has to be re redrawn appropriately and so on um, now this is an infinite loop the way I've written this at the moment uh, what I'm actually going to do is create a boolean variable which I'll call quit and I'll set that equal to uh, false and I'm going to do this loop while quit is false in other words while not quit or I could say while quit equals equals false or while quit equals equal uh, while quit is not equal to true um, th those are all kind of the same thing so while not quit while quit is false I'll do the loop and that means that if I set quit to true anywhere in this loop then that's going to make the loop quit which is what I want because the next thing I have to do is um, this is going to execute as rapidly as possible because we want to be able to update the positions of particles and redraw them as quickly as possible to create a smooth animation uh, so um, what I need to do every time the loop runs is, is not only update the positions of particles and redraw them I also need to process the event queue so in between one iteration of this loop and the next and it's possible uh, even though it's going to hopefully execute really quickly like 30 times a second or something um, it's possible that multiple things could have happened and uh, SDL provides us with a way of checking multiple events uh, one after the other and we're going to do that in a loop which is going to be nested within the game loop what we're going to do here is we're going to say while SDL underscore poll events so poll events here um, it's, not, it's not being resolved at the moment because this is actually going to fetch the latest event or um, I guess it fe fetches the first event in the queue of possible events that have built up since the last time we called it and it fills in information uh, in an in a object of type SDL event let's declare that so normally if I want to use something here which I do um, if I want to supply an argument to SDL poll events which has to be a, the address of a variable normally I would declare it as close as possible to this loop 
but because I don't want to be um, constantly re-declaring this variable in effect when a loop executes, I'm going to declare it outside of this loop uh, just because I suspect, although I'm not sure, that that may, may make my program more efficient rather than if I declare this within the loop um, and, uh, and C++ will be forced to constantly like destroy this variable and recreate it every time the loop iterated. So we need to supply the address of this, whatever it is, to SDL poll events. Um, so SDL poll events will fill in information about what events have happened since last time it was called into this variable. Uh, so for that reason it needs its address. So we're going to say address event there. Um, I'm getting an error here. It's possible it's called poll event. There we go. Now, you see, it may appear like I have an encyclopedic um, knowledge of SDL, but I really don't. The only reason I can remember this is because I've typed it over and over again um, in the course of writing programs recently, especially, and in the course of uh, making these tutorials. I think, I think this is the fourth time I've recorded this video because something went horribly wrong each previous time. This time I'm keeping my fingers crossed. So now it's like stuck in my head. But um, as, a, as a programmer, you're not expected to remember a uh, particular API unless you're working with it day in, day out for months or years or something. And indeed, I don't remember STL that well, but I've somehow got this in my head now without even meaning to because I've typed it so many times. OK, so this is going to this loop is going to it's going to keep iterating as long as STL poll event returns true. And it's going to do that as long as the, there's an event um, waiting to be processed. Uh, so um, when it finds an event that um, can be processed, it returns true, which keeps the loop going, and it fills in information about that event in this event variable. So every time we do the main game loop, game loop which we hope will execute something like 30 times a second or even more, we're going to also loop through all the waiting events and process them. But the only one we're actually going to use in this tutorial is um, we're going to um, well we're going to access the type member, which is some sort of public um, member variable of this event. Um, uh, I think it's technically a union which we haven't looked at, um, uh, but we can think of this as a struct. We haven't looked at structs either, but a struct is the same as a class. It's just that in a struct, its member variables are public by default. Whereas if you don't, if you don't um, specify public or private in a class, the member variables or methods are private by default. But sometimes for the sake of efficiency, you want to be able to access directly member variables of a class or struct, um, even though that breaks encapsulation, sometimes, especially in games, this is something that you do for the sake of efficiency, and that's what we're doing here. Um, I meant to type, I meant to put event.type here, actually, and we're going to see if that's equal to sdl underscore quit. Now, the, the quit event is raised if you click whatever decoration on your window closes the window, so in, in Windows, um, if you click the cross in the corner of the window, that raises an SDL quit event, which we put into the event queue, which this will then retrieve. And we can then check and see, oh yeah, we've got an SDL quit event. It's time to quit the program. And we'll do that just by setting quit equals true, which will then terminate our outer loop. And then we'll go through to, um, to wind down the program. Let's see if this works. So let's build this. And um, I've done something slightly wrong here. What do I do? Redefinition of um, screen width. Oh yeah, I didn't spot that. I should have put screen height here. Apologies if you spotted that and were wondering what on earth I was doing. Well, it's hard to get through this without making some mistake, but hopefully I'll get there in the end. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so I meant to um, have this um, 600 by um, 800 by 600 pixels. Okay, this window. Now let's check if this finally runs. So I'm going to click Run here, 
and it doesn't seem to like that. Let's make sure I built it and we can run it. Wow, so that's a little strange. One thing you can do um, if your build gets into a tangle is go to project clean. That will delete your final program and all of your compiled object files. And sometimes that helps. And then you can build it again. Let's go to build all, just to make sure it really is building everything. And let's, just to be doubly sure we're, we're trying to run the right project, let's right click it and go to run as local C++ application. And now finally we've got a window. So I don't know what the problem was there, but um, it's good that it came up because I meant to show you this um, clean build thing. So it's just a blank screen, which I actually find quite exciting because it's full of potential. Now, now we can begin to manipulate the pixels in this window. Um, and you may hear my computer working a bit. That's because unlike a normal graphical user interface program, which, which will spend a lot of time harmlessly idling, uh, so not using up CPU, a game like this, let's click the cross in the corner of the window here, so it quits. A game like this will, will as I say, it will try to update everything as often as possible. So we've got this loop executing frantically in here. And that's why, even though we're not doing anything, you hear the perhaps my computer's fan struggling a bit. So um, I think that's it for this tutorial. Uh, yeah, as I say, the project clean, if we talk about cleaning a build or doing a clean build and that means deleting all your compiled objects and your final program, your .o files and then recompiling. So you need to clean it and then go to build project and sometimes that will help you get out of various tangles. So that's it for this tutorial and uh, in the next tutorial we'll look, we'll, hopefully we'll get actually something drawn on this window like uh, at least some pixels or maybe a solid, a solid block of colour or something like that. So until next time, happy coding.